Now let's turn our attention to Ethiopia. It's an East African country of about 120 million people. They've just celebrated one year since the end of a civil war. A war between the military and local militias. The Ethiopian forces are under President Abiy Ahmed. The local militias were in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. The war ended last year, but it was not a peaceful year for Ethiopia. Another conflict began. In fact, it's still on. This is in the country's Amara region again between Abe Ahmed's forces and local militias. Meanwhile, floods have devastated the other side of the country. At least 20 people have died and thousands have been displaced. So calling this chaotic would be an understatement. Let me ask you a question instead. What would you do if your country was constantly beset with turmoil? Whatever you answer, it won't match the president's. Abe Ahmed is a Nobel laureate he won the Nobel Peace Prize. In the last few years, he's led three wars, and now he's hinting at a fourth one. He's been drumming up tensions, this time with all of Ethiopia's neighbors. It started with his statements on the Red Sea. Abiy Ahmed wants access to it, the Red Sea. Slight problem, though. Ethiopia is a landlocked country, one of the most populated landlocked nations in the world. And Abiy Ahmed feels that geography is hurting his economy. So what's the solution? Take a port from a neighbor, it seems. He hasn't made an open threat yet. Ahmed says he wants to strike a bargain. And what's his offer? Shares in valuable Ethiopian assets as payment for a port. Also, he doesn't seem to be willing to take no for an answer. He has made public speeches in recent weeks all about getting a port. He talks about it in a televised address and even to business leaders during forums. He apparently told them that the military option was on the table, that they would use force if required. Reports say Ab Abiy Ahmed told this to local business leaders, but he denies it publicly. He says he does not want another war, although his rhetoric says otherwise. Let me quote from what he said. The lack of port access was, quote unquote, a potential source of future conflict. It does sound like a threat, and it's being seen as a threat by all of Ethiopia's seafaring neighbors. But one country is more alarmed than the others, and that's Eritrea. Some 30 years back, Eritrea was part of Ethiopia. Eritrea gained independence in 1993. It shares a bloody history with Ethiopia, its former overlord. They were locked in a border conflict for almost two decades, and that conflict ended months after Abiy Ahmed came to power. The irony is inescapable. Abiy Ahmed won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 for resolving the border conflict with Eritrea. And now he's pressuring the same country for port access, also hinting at conflict should he be denied. Eritrea has called Abiy Ahmed's request, quote unquote, excessive. They say it has, and I'm quoting again, perplexed all concerned observers. But Abiy Ahmed believes that access should be given on historical, geographical, ethnic, and economic grounds. Those are his words. Let me explain this. Here's the historical argument. Long ago, Ethiopia controlled the entire Horn of Africa region. Abiy Ahmed also quoted a 19th century general. He said the Red Sea was Ethiopia's natural boundary. There was also talk about people-to-people -people ties. But Abiy Ahmed's main point seems to be economic. He says, no country can see rapid progress without access to maritime trade. And he cited UN studies in support of this, about the lack of sea access. It says, lack of sea access reduces a nation's GDP by 20%. Now, currently, Ethiopia has to rely on its neighbor Djibouti for sea access. And it comes at a huge cost, more than a billion dollars a year. President Abiy Ahmed says, this is unsustainable which is why he wants a port for his country. Now, there's some weight to, the, to this logic in the economic arguments. But if we are talking about economics, he seems to be forgetting the cardinal rule. War is bad for business. Ethiopia's president should know this better than most. He has fought wars since coming to power. Two wars. A third conflict is underway. Thousands have been killed. His country is reeling from war exhaustion. And amid all of this, what does he plan to do? Ramp up tensions over a port. So we have to ask, when is the right time to rescind a Nobel Peace Prize?
because for Rabi Ahmed, it should have been years ago.